G'day everyone and welcome to the Spontaneous Podcast, a podcast where we attempt to have a spontaneous look into Shane's world. This is for pastors, leaders, business people and basically any human being. Today's episode is the first of many to come and I have the opportunity to sit down with Pastor Shane to hear some of his story and how he found Jesus. But we also cover the big question of how do I know what my calling is? So it's probably the best place to start is probably is probably not not to ask the question who are you because that's always a little bit cliche and awkward. Um, but but I just explore. I guess I mean let's just give you a rundown of, of your the key relationships in your life. You got an amazing wife, got an amazing wife. one wife. Praise God, one's yeah. enough. One, How one much can a koala bear? <laughs> As in, I'm there. One is enough, and I got to tell you, 32 years of marriage, and it's been incredible. I love my wife, and I I, I promise you. I, as in, I hit the jackpot. There's no doubt about that. It was like heaven made her just for me. And uh, how long have you been married for now? Thirty-two years. Because you just celebrated that yes. two yesterday. Yesterday, it was yesterday. yesterday. You went out for uh, Mexican. Yeah, after uh, I did interns at night, it's like it was silly. I you ate at like 10, 10 p.m. or something. Yeah, we did, but whatever. <laughs> and so we had uh, uh, thirty-two years of marriage. I got two beautiful daughters and a wonderful, wonderful son of choice, our son-in-law. Yeah. And uh, Rio. 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 Yota. Yes. That's Yota. where you know where you're Japanese from. That's it. Like sushi, <laughs> Kirishiwa, <laughs> Suzuki, Kawasaki, all the those best. words. So we've got all that going on. So I've got two beautiful daughters, uh, Rio's in our life. We've got two ugly dogs, a smelly cat. Um, I, I love people. You know I love people. I love yeah, God. I love people. I love the AFL. Go with the Mighty Tigers. Yeah. Away from Tiger Land. And... Uh, uh, so I love the Tigers, I love cars, I love V8s, I love muscles, yep. uh, muscle car that is. Yep. It's, uh, and so that's, that's, but obviously my passion and the thing that uh, gets me really, really excited is my love for God and the fact that God loved me so much and man, I've been a Christian now since uh, 1987. I grew yeah, up well. in the church, wasn't of the church, mm. alcoholic poisoning, came to Christ and look what the Lord has done. 1987. 1987. Which yeah, goes well, to show, yeah. if, if you look at what God has done and is doing through Enjoy Church, yeah. if God can do it, so he found me in a hospital bed with alcoholic poisoning, yeah. that's where we encountered him, that's where I came alive in Christ. Yeah. If God can use me in that way, what could God do with a comedian? Yeah. What could God do with a plumber? Come on. Like Marty. A tradies. Yeah, a tradie or a girl from Kiwa Valley like Louise Arioka. Yes, yeah. Louise or whoever, we can talk about anybody. Mm. As in, if you're lending to God, I promise you, God's got so much. Mm. That's what I get excited about. It's amazing. And that's what I see in people. Yeah. So when I see people, I don't just see people, I see what can be in Christ and it's unbelievable. Yeah, that's unbelievable. incredible. For every person. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. Let's, uh, let's wind it back a bit because I'm always interested to kind of, well, I guess what I love is that every single person, like when you're up there preaching on a Sunday, I mean, you would look across, you'd see so many different faces. Yep. And every single face that you see has a different story, yep. a different testimony on how they experienced God's love and how they experienced uh, what it is to have a relationship with Him. And every yep. single story looks different. Yep. That's what I love about you know being a Christian and, and doing this thing called church, which is people. It's not a tilt slab building, yeah, but yeah, it's an yeah, amazing yeah, yeah. You know, facility we've got here. But yeah, yeah, you, yeah. you just look across and you see all the different stories. So yeah. for me, like, if we go back before that alcoholic poisoning, yep. and uh, what was your, I uh, kind of guess, upbringing as, yeah. as far as, like, uh, un the, uh, an understanding of who God is? Well, I, I believed in God. So my parents became Christians when I was about nine years of age. Yeah. And so... Uh, I, I was water baptized with them. I wasn't necessarily a follower of Christ, yeah. as in it was it was fairly loose. I would not have baptized me. I had no idea what I was doing. Yeah, right. But as in, so if if you saw yeah. your nine year old self, yeah, you would be like, maybe we won't baptize you no now. No way. Yeah. Yeah. I had no understanding. <laughs> I, I knew nothing. Yeah. I just thought it'd be fun. Yeah. As in, I was in for the fun. I wanted to do a bomb in the pool in the church. I was yeah. like, let's jump in. Like I told what, but I had no real understanding. But this is this is undoubtedly the truth. Yeah. Over my teenage years, there was at least five times where the Holy Spirit turned up. Yeah, wow. Like, bang, boom. It was like, 
It was like, I believed in God. I could not not believe in God because I encountered God for myself at least five times over my teenage years. So um, so growing up, I grew up, my parents were Christians. I was in church every Sunday. Uh, I was at school. I was a rat bag. Yeah. Um, I was always in trouble with the principal. I wouldn't say that it was uh, necessarily bad seed, but what I would say is I was mischievous and I was yeah. fun-loving and party, party, let's go party. Yeah. And I was all of that. And so uh, I was often in the principal's office and uh, yada, yada, yada. But... But at the end of the day, I was just in for fun. But yeah. the Lord keep reach, reaching out to me, which I find amazing. Yeah. And so I would find myself, even at school, standing for Christ and standing for God, yeah. even though I wasn't necessarily a follower, but I believed in his existence. I believed he was real. Yeah. I believed in his presence because I experienced it for myself and I couldn't deny it. Yeah, well, yeah. so would you say it was like, did you have a lot of head knowledge? Did you have a lot of... Bible understanding or were you just kind of like my parents have made this decision so I'm just going to stand for it I don't fully know what I'm standing for uh, what, what I what I believed in I, un- I understood enough of the gospel to know that Jesus yeah. came into the world for God so loved the world that he gave his one only son so I understood that I yeah. believed in God the Father God the Son God the Holy Spirit yeah. uh, when it came to head knowledge I had very little yeah. but what I did have was uh, experience in the sense that I experienced the presence of God and that's the thing. It's like if people can argue you into the kingdom, people can argue you out. Yeah. But when you experience the presence of God, no one can argue. Yeah. There's no argument. Game over. Full stop. Because you've in, you've experienced Christ for yourself. Yeah. And so when it came to the arguments, my argument was simple. God is real. God is real. The presence of God is real. Jesus is real. The Holy Spirit is real. Yeah. Um, Jesus died for you. That's it. That's all I knew. So I would find myself arguing. But but I would I would argue for Christ. But then I would be um, just doing whatever, doing whatever. Yeah, right. And all my friends knew it. Yeah. But they, but so I was running with a crazy crowd, fun crowd. Yeah. Um, but regardless of that, I believed in God. Did God ever, had me. It's an interesting thing, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Did they ever like so the people around you because you were standing up for Christ? Yeah. Living, what well, I'm assuming people would have seen as not necessarily a Christ like way of living yeah 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 was there did people question that no not at all because i wasn't saying they should be followers of christ because i wasn't one myself right i was just saying god is real yeah and i'd experienced god i believed in god and god was real which is pretty funny isn't it yeah even the even the demons believe yeah so it's not necessarily believing that's going to transform your life yeah it's how you live yeah so so would you so is there any particular you said you have five encounters yeah before your Alcohol, alcoholic poisoning. Yeah, yeah, which is the one that... Is there any one that kind of stands out? Are they, are they encounters with people? Are they kind of like... Um, no, the, uh, yeah, so they were either at camps. Yeah, I remember okay. being at a, a youth camp one time, an yeah. encounter God. I remember being in a um, in a in a friendship group, yeah. or a leaders meeting slash friendship group in a pastor's house. Yeah, well, And God powerfully turned up, powerfully wow. turned up. I remember being at a at a youth alive camp yeah. um, down at Portsea, um, and I turned up there, and I had a whole lot of bad stuff going on in my life and in my heart, and God, God arrested me, and knocked me on my back, yeah, wow. and I encountered God, and I think you know, and so I look back at, at those times, and that's why you, I could not deny God, I could not deny Christ in the context of He's alive and He is real. I hadn't made a decision to live for him, yeah. but but I would fly the Jesus flag even if I wasn't a Jesus follower. Yeah, wow. Yeah. So did you? So it's not like you ever had these moments where you did try, maybe in your own strength, oh, so to speak. Yeah, I would or? say I probably did. Yeah, I would say I did. So I'd you come out of a youth camp, you yeah, you had this encounter, you were fired up, and then yeah, and then it kind of just do it for a little bit. Yeah, yeah. But then I go back to school and my mates talk to me about Saturday night at the party. Yeah. Oh, right. hey, there's another party on Saturday night. You show you get to come. Yeah, let's party. Yeah. Back in the day, I used to get called Billy. Billy. That's what all my friends called me at school, <laughs> Billy. Billy Baxter. Maybe it'll be uh, Billy's world. Billy's world. <laughs> Who knows where it's going to land? It's a strange world. Yeah. Well, the whole enjoy world is yeah. it's a peculiar world. But yeah. I got to tell you, I love it. Yeah, it's the I best. Love it. It's the best. So, so what was. So what was different? Like what that that the moment that you had you're in hospital, yeah, yeah. alcohol poisoning. Yeah. Like was there certain steps that you decided to take after that? 
I, that changed everything? You know what I mean? Or was it yeah. just that one powerful encounter? Yeah, it was one encounter that really revealed to me the love and the grace of God that was being extended towards me. Yeah, well. So I'd made a decision uh, about nine months earlier to leave church altogether, even though I still turned up occasionally. I'll yeah. turn up to church and in and out. But I'd made a decision to leave church. Basically went on a pub crawl and... Um, uh, uh, people, people have said to me that, and uh, people have said to my parents that I was an alcoholic because they've heard the fact that I ended up with alcoholic poisoning. I wasn't. Um, but when I hit it, I hit it hard. Yeah. And so uh, it's like the scripture says, whatever your hand finds to do, do it with all your might. Yeah. Even before I was a follower of Christ, when it came to drinking, I did that one. And yeah. uh, I, I hit it hard. I've, I've probably, that's my personality though. Yeah. If I'm going to do it, I do it with everything. Yeah. And so... So I end up with alcoholic poisoning. And so I'm in the Aubrey Base Hospital and I encountered Christ and in that he spoke to me of his love and his grace and it was extended to me in a way that when I woke up uh, 36 hours later or whatever it was, I, I, I made a determination because his words were still booming in my head, booming in my heart, booming in my spirit. And I was like, I was alive yeah. in Christ. I, I, it was like, I came alive. And so I made a decision um, to uh, reach out to the youth leader that had been trying to reach me for the last nine months. Yeah, wow. Well, and by shout keep, out to all the youth leaders. <coughs> Just <coughs> keep keep going. That's right. Keep, keep chasing after them and keep chasing, praying yeah. and believing. That's right. So yeah. this this guy, his name is Mark Crawford, who is now yeah. my brother-in-law. Yeah, wow. Well. And but he would he would ring me every Saturday. He'd say, "Shane, you coming to youth? You coming to youth? You coming every Saturday?" And I would I would lie. And I would say, no, I'm going to the city. Yeah. No, I'm going to the movies. No, I'm going bowling. Would you always reply? Uh, yeah, it would be on the phone. Oh, so, of so, course. Yeah, but <laughs> what, would, to... what would happen is, because he would say to me, are you coming? And I'd, yeah. I'd make up something on the spot. I'd yeah, lie. Okay. But then I would have to go and do it <laughs> because I'm not a liar. And I wasn't a liar. Yeah, well. I, if I said I was going to do it. You I would got have integrity. Been, yeah, well, <laughs> Sort of, in a weird sort of way. Yeah. Are you going to come? No, I'm going to go bowling. But then I'd have to go bowling. Yeah. And so I'd find myself in the city quite often on a Saturday night dancing with Hare Krishnas or going to the <laughs> movies and doing all sorts of stuff yeah. because I said I was going to go yeah. and I had to go. So when I had my encounter with Christ, I was in Albury, but I woke up and I'm like, his voice was booming in my heart, booming yeah, well. in my head. So I'm like, Mark Crawford, what are you doing uh, for youth? He said, we're going to a youth camp. And so I went to the youth camp. Friday night, oh, wow. the speaker who I didn't know walks onto the platform and he looks at me and he points at me and he says, this is what's been happening in your life. And he read my book and I was like, that was sealed it. It was like, that's it, game over for Jesus. Yeah. That's, that's it. So thought, you found from from there, you kind of found every decision that you know that you needed to make, uh, like whether it was friends, like friendship circles that you might have been yeah. a part of that you, you know that weren't great influences for you. Yep. That, those decisions were just easier to make? Uh, they were, yes and no. Um, what I would say is I knew what I had to do. Yeah. It's like if you want to be a footballer, there's things you need to do. Yeah. You need to go to training. You need to go on the field. Yeah. You need to commit yourself. And it's like I realised, and so I was building houses, so I'm a carpenter by trade. I, I understand. I've got to get foundations right. I've got to, I got to, I got to get this sorted out. Yeah. And so after becoming a Christian, giving my life to Christ, it was like, and everyone could see the difference. Like literally the light came on. Yeah. And so I knew where I needed to be on, on Sundays. I need to be in church. Uh, friendship group or small group, I need to be in a small group. Yeah. I need to find a place and begin to serve. I knew what I needed to do. No one really told me, but... As, it's like when you come alive in Christ, if you believe that that Jesus is alive and the church is his body or his bride, yeah. it's easy to go to work. You can find yourself in the presence of God. It's yeah. easy. Yeah. And yeah. were you a chippy at this stage? Like our Lord and Saviour? Yeah. I was. I, <laughs> <coughs> no, I, I still reckon that Jesus would have 100% been a uh, electrician. Because he's the light of the world? He's the light of the world and, and he's... Filled with power. Yeah. You know? But unfortunately, that yeah. was before his time. But all the plumbers would say that he's living water, so maybe the plumbers would be like, he's living water. Let's just do trade jokes for the next five minutes. Yeah. It'd be amazing. That's right. And, and for the uh, all the bricklayers, he's a, he's a st stone or the rock of our salvation. Right. And so, anyway. So you were, uh, you were chippy. 
Like our Lord and Saviour. At that, at that point in time. Absolutely. Yeah. And loving it. Yeah. I enjoyed being a carpenter. I yeah. really did. I love, I love the sense of accomplishment. Yeah. And so, and so when I became a pastor, yeah. that was one of the greatest challenges I had because yeah, well, with a, building a house, yeah. you turn up on a bare block, you set out your lines, you string it all out, yeah. you put your foundations in and you go to work. Three months later, you give them the key and it's complete yeah. and it's wonderful. Building the house of God... Oh man, when I when I became a full time pastor after three months, I wanted to quit because I'd yeah, come well. at, back to the church as it were, yeah. and I'd see my windows walking down the road, the bricks are walking down the road. It's like it's like I thought we had this established. I thought we were building something, and people yeah. come, people go, and it's like, it's way harder. Let's um so let's talk about you calling, I guess. Yeah. yeah. So was it you? You got saved. Yep. As in you had you experienced. God's love, and you said, you know what, I'm going to be serious about this relationship yeah. with Jesus Christ. Yeah. Was it kind of, was it kind of in that initial kind of st- starting phase there that you really felt the calling to ministry, or was it something that just kind of dawned on you? You just kind of found yourself heading that way. It, it was a journey. It was yeah. a very much a journey. So I, once I became a Christian, uh, like I said, whatever your hand finds to do, do it with all your might. So yeah. I'd been living wayward. And but now that same energy is that now being focused into the kingdom of God. Yeah. So I'm serving not because someone told me I had to. I love to. I yeah. want to. It's a body of Christ. Why would I not want to? Yeah. As in, it's like it's like I said, the footballer who doesn't turn up and go to go to football. You got to ask yourself, what sort of footballer is he? Mm. But once I became a Christian, I'm like, I want to serve. Let me set the chairs up. Let me be on the door. Let me do whatever I can do. And so I just went to work. And then all of a sudden, people start prophesying over me. Uh, and they're, they're talking about all this stuff. And I'm like, I don't know what the heck you're on, dude. I so you literally had no idea what like that prophetic kind of well, gifting I, was? or I sort, of, I sort of understood it, but I'm yeah. like, no, 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 oh, no, okay. no. Yeah. I'm, like, I'm like, as I say, what do you want? Because that can't be for me. I'm a carpenter. I love it. I, I love Jesus. And I'm just serving the church, yeah. serving God, serving the church. And so... But what happened was all these prophecies are coming and, and then Georgie and I get married and we, as in people saying, you're going to do great things for God. And I'm like, yeah, I know. But I'm thinking in the context of normal people just doing something really cool, yeah. but not ever thinking ministry. Yeah. And, and so, but then, but then as we journeyed along, it was like God separated us unto himself put us in a place where we could hear his word. Yeah. And then I do remember, so I got saved March 28, 1987. I do remember there was a day probably, in, I say probably in 1991, where God spoke very clearly to me. Yeah, well. And over three days, he, he told me very clearly to get myself ready for ministry yeah. and to go and speak to my pastor yeah. and ask him to help me to get ready for ministry. I, um, I really didn't... Th- understand what I was getting myself into but I definitely encountered God and I look back on those three days and it was like God spoke and then I was like but I still really didn't necessarily understand the fullness of what he had for me just that I needed yeah. to get ready for ministry yeah. yeah so that was five years roughly five years after yeah after yeah. you yeah so that's amazing yeah that's right yeah. and during that time foundations are going down and I'm starting to work out who I am in Christ and who I'm not in Christ and yeah. what it is to be a Christian and what yeah. it is to be a husband and, and on we went yeah and yeah. so and what I'm assuming right as I'm, as I'm hearing this stuff what I'm assuming is the way I'm going to phrase it is yeah. ministry there wasn't exactly like cool ministry back then was there? Was there was there, was there like your uh, your Chad Beach wearing you know tight jeans and and, and just like flashy things happening and no, you know no. just exciting things going on or and, and if there was all of that I probably yeah. wouldn't have been in that crowd anyway yeah because I was more like You're probably a, throwing a, stuff at them yeah I was like a, tra- a tradie <laughs> bogan you know what I'm saying so yeah. a bit of a tradie bogan living in yeah, the country okay. yeah and then even living in the you know so. I grew up in Albury. George and I moved back to Albury, but we were in Saguna, which is a community of 2,000 people yeah, well. on the outside of Albury. Yeah. So I wasn't even cool in a country sense. I was like, I was just doing my thing with yeah. a, a, a pastor that was probably 30 years older than I am and um, very strong in his own ways, set in his own ways, had his own ideas and, and very much a spiritual man. But, um, and I'm trying to be... 
uh, why is how I would say this and not just let my tongue go crazy because because <laughs> um, I'm aware that some people are going to hear this and they know where <laughs> I've come from and but I, I will always honour that pastor because yeah. he was exactly what I needed because I'd been uh, a bit of, a bit of a rebel without a cause. And now I'm a rebel with a cause. I, but I, I needed a strong hand, a firm hand. You know, the Bible teaches us that the Lord disciplines the sons that he loves. And, and I needed discipline. I needed discipline in my life. I needed the Holy Ghost in my life. And I needed someone to look me in the eye and call me out on the garbage yeah, well, that I was trying to get away with. Yeah. And so even it, when, sa- it sounds painful. It doesn't it was sound painful. easy. No, it wasn't easy. Yeah. So it, so we had five, four years where I would meet my pastor um, every Thursday afternoon for an hour to hour and a half. And a lot of the times I would leave in tears. Yeah, wow. And sometimes what God was doing in that room literally brought a physical pain to my heart. Now that might sound, man, that's crazy. What the heck's going on there? It's not. As in, as in we need to really, there's got to be a point in all of our lives where we're going to let God into every part of our life. Yeah. I think a lot of Christians, just being frank, yeah. they're, 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 let's they're, go there. Yeah, they're, good, go. they're good for church on Sunday. Yeah. yeah, Lord, I'll give you all my life, especially an hour and a half Sunday morning. Uh, but after that, I'm a busy guy. I'm time poor, Lord. As in, So you can have my life, but you can't have my time. You can't have my marriage. You can't have my family. And you can't have my pain or my junk that I carry around from the past. Yeah. But if you're going to do something for God, you've got to realize he, he wants all of it. Mm. He wants all of our life. He wants the pain. He wants the junk. He wants your heart. Yeah. You know, you 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 know, because you're one of our leaders, pastors. Proverbs four twenty three. Above all else, guard your heart. Yeah. From it flow all the issues of life. And it's like guard your heart. We've got to clean up our hearts. Yeah. And the Holy Spirit is going to want to do a work on us that is so deep and so intimate. Yeah. It will pain us. Yeah. 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 And and that's where the uh, if you were to ask any enjoyers, you'd say what is probably the the, one of the greatest catchphrases yep. or one of the greatest yep. uh, sayings that you'll hear from platform. Yep. And er, I reckon 98% of everyone yep. would probably say, my heart, my responsibility. Yep. And uh, probably for myself, probably for a few a few years there, I didn't f- probably fully understand what it meant, yeah, to yeah. be honest, if yeah, I can yeah. be honest. Because I like it me, when you're honest. Yeah. Especially uh, senior location. <laughs> well, yeah. I always try my hardest. <laughs> And uh, but for me, like it was sometimes it was a bit hard to understand. Like, well, they've done this to me, yeah. And and it was. I think people sometimes think that and people a, can read that's minds, a great right? Victim statement. Yeah, right? yeah. Like, great victim. That's statement. right. Yeah, they great have victims. Done, they've yeah. done this to me, and that's not going to work. A, a, a victim mentality will not work alongside my heart, no, no. my response. But you got to work out. You're going to be a victim or victorious. Yeah. I want victory. Yeah. I've got to put that victim mentality, that victim attitude behind me. Yeah. As in, and I do understand that there's been a lot of really bad things yeah. done to all sorts of people. And it's terrible. Yeah. I hate it. Um, but at the end of the day, I'm not going to live as a victim. Yeah. I've had bad things done to me. I've had bad things said to me. So have you. Yeah. We all have. Uh, and on the, on the level of things... There are way more people that have had way worse things done to them than anything I could even think about. Yeah. But at the end of the day, we've got to work out, are, our, are those moments in our life going to determine who we are going to be? Yeah. Are, they, are, they, are they going to define us for the rest of our life to be categorised with this label or that label? Or are we going to say, I'm going to move on? I'm yeah. going to put my hope in God. I'm going to allow him to do the work in my heart that needs to happen, yeah. and I'm going to lay hold of the life God's got for me. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing. Just, just really taking ownership, yep. you know, of your heart. Like, yep. like you said, no one else knows it. No, no one, knows one else it. knows what's deep down in there that's actually holding you back. No, they don't. And would you say, for, for myself, for my experience in my 31 years of life? But I, what I've noticed is, is like you said, you know, having your, your first pastor really challenge you and you come out feeling like your heart's hurting. Yeah, yeah. But it's kind of like in the really hard kind of struggles, yeah. uh, there's really hard moments where you, you're having to, to deal with these internal issues that are going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if you actually set aside time for that, if you make space for that, if you say, God, you know what, I'm willing yeah, for yeah. you to, to work in my heart, and reveal what needs to be dealt with. Yeah, if yeah. you're actually raw and honest like that, that's that's where you will grow like the yeah. most. And you, you've got to go there. Yeah. As in, it makes me laugh because we sing songs about the crucible, 
Mm. You know, it's like, yeah, put me in the crucible, send me in the fire, praise yeah. the Lord. And it's it sounds like, awesome on a Sunday morning. Oh, yeah, it's we're easy, all right? singing it, hands in the air. And I'm thinking, how many of us really want to hop in the crucible and go into the fire yeah. and, and be melted to the point of all the garbage coming to the surface and skimmed off? No one really wants that. But we sing songs like we're so holy and whatever. Yeah. And I'm not against singing the song. Yeah. But what I notice is often when we're going through it, people opt out. They opt out. You yeah. know, you know the song, you know, in the crashing, in the whatever. And it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like beautiful songs. But the reality of these moments, are, it is painful. Yeah, 100%. It's pain. We're, we're talking about real life here. Yeah. And we're talking about dealing with real stuff. Yeah. But if you don't deal with it, uh, then it's going to be with you wherever you go. Yeah. That's why you would have seen it. I've seen it. We've all yeah. seen people leave church, go to another church, leave church, go to another church, leave church, go to another church. And it's, and like, it's always it's, the... It's always the church's, the church's fault. fault. Yeah, yeah. But what I've noticed is wherever you are, that's where you are. Mm. And so if everywhere you are, yeah. there's always issues, well, maybe the issue ain't always the Pretty issue. simple math. Yeah. Yeah, well. <laughs> it's getting harsh. It's getting... I like it. We had harsh on Shane's world. It's, it's Shane's world. It's part of it all. Yeah, so that's good. I guess we'll, we'll wrap it up, but... Let's just chat about some maybe some takeaways. So yep. people's calling, that's obviously the big question. Yeah, yeah. You know, what am I called to do? Uh, how do I know if I'm doing the right thing? Yep. How do I know which university course to enroll in? Yeah. How, how do I, there's so many questions about, uh, you know, just, just understanding like, am I hearing from God? Yep. Or is this just like you love to say, the pizza that I ate last night? Yeah, yeah. You know, it's, it's like, what is the best way? To, yep. to know that you are without a doubt in the will of God, yep. that you're walking uh, like the like the scripture says, you know, it's a lamp, his word, lamp to your feet, light to your path. You're walking on the right path. Yep. You're heading in the right direction. Yep. What are some what are some strategies? How do, how do you know if, okay. you're, if you're doing the right thing? Well, let me say this because the reality is we overcomplicate it. Mm. And what we're looking for is exactly what you're asking for. We want to know about the calling. Yep. It's the wrong thing. Don't go after the calling. Yeah. And it's like, but that's what the question is. Hmm. No, that's that's the answer. Or that is the destination. Don't pursue the don't pursue that. Yeah. Pursue Christ. Seek first the kingdom of God, and all these things will be added unto you. It so often we it's like we, we are trying to work it out. Don't try and work it out. Have the attitude, whatever your hand finds to do, do it with all your might. Yeah. I didn't I never went looking for a calling. I didn't even know what a calling was. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like I didn't know what it was. I never mm. went looking for the calling. I went looking for Jesus. That's great. I wanted to serve his church. Whatever my hand uh, found to do, I did it. This is what I, I know, and you would have seen it. People get too hung up on their giftings and their callings. Mm. This is my gift. This is what I do. Yeah. No, 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 no. What does it say about Paul? Paul said. I, Paul, a servant of Christ Jesus, called to be an apostle. All right. First thing we've got to work out, who am I? I, I I'm a child of God. My name is Shane. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? As in, I need to work out who I am in Christ. My name is Shane. I, Shane, uh, a, a, a servant of Christ Jesus. That's where it begins. And then called to be an apostle. A lot of people want to work out the calling before they worked out yeah, who well, they are yeah. or the fact that we're really just here to serve God and the body of Christ yeah. and those that we're coming in contact with. But if I commit whatever my, my hand finds to do with all, I'm going to commit to do it with all my heart. Yeah. I'm just going to, I know who I am in Christ now. I'm just going to start to serve yeah. and serve and serve and serve. And at the right time, what will happen is you'll connect to your spiritual giftings and your calling and it will be evident to everybody. Yeah. I promise you, the words that have been spoken over my life and where I, what I find myself doing now is not what I did in the beginning. Mm -hmm. In the beginning, I set up chairs. That was my first job. Yeah. I was a carpenter like our Lord and Savior. I think I mentioned that. Mm -hmm. I had a tape measure and a string line. How many of you know, if you cannot get those chairs straight, <laughs> you will not change the world. Yeah. You have, as, in, as in, think about it. The Lord, he's the one who, who put this incredible world together. There is order. We've got to get the trees, yeah. chairs in a straight line. Remember that, Rowan. Yeah, 100%. Uh, we've got to we get got, the we got at our, at Bendigo, we've got like this big metal bar. It's it's amazing. I reckon every church plant, in every church plant box, there should be one of those lasers like that, <laughs> that we can set the chair. Anyway, move right along. <laughs> but, but we begin by knowing we've got to find our identity in Christ. 
Then we just start serving with all our might. Yeah. And then our gifts and our calling will become very apparent to everyone. It's amazing. And God and people will open doors. Yeah. I say God and people because it's God using people to open doors and bring promotion. Yeah. And then what will happen more and more and more and more, everyone will just see the it factor yeah. and what is connected up to that person's life because it comes from God. Yeah. It's, um, uh, what I've noticed is... Uh, people come in and they say, this is who I am and this is what I do. Yeah. And I'm like, well, let's just see it. Yeah. Let's uh, understand this, uh, whatever, but let's see it. Just yeah. go to work, start serving, and we'll see it. Yeah. And then promotion comes from the yeah. Lord. And would you, uh, let's, let's not use the word promote, but if you're looking for a position yeah. to be filled in the yeah. life of the church, any position, yeah, yeah. are you looking for talent or are you looking for heart? Um, I'm looking for heart. Yeah. As in all the time looking for heart. So... Because we, we can teach skills, we can teach ability, we can teach talent. Yeah. But heart, yeah. that is my heart, my responsibility, your heart, your responsibility. Heart is between the individual and God. Mm. And uh, what, what we've seen over the years is, yeah, we, we've had every charismatic person with every charismatic gift come through. But, but those who really end up building church are people who want to serve God and serve people. Mm. And so um, we'll go on that journey. Yeah, We'll go on that journey. I look for heart more than anything. I know yeah, well. even when it comes to promotion, I'll promote people from one department to another department because we can upskill them in regards to the skills they require for that department. Yeah. But the heart, yeah. you can't upskill heart. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's incredible. If we just look at, if we just think about, you know, what some of the gems you just said around calling and everything. Yeah. So I'm, I'm assuming that, uh, you know, when you first stepped into ministry, you had absolutely no idea that you would, I guess, start or be a part of a church that would be called Enjoy Church, number one. Like, who would have come up with that name? <laughs> Maybe the Lord. <laughs> Enjoy Church. Yeah. And then now, uh, I don't know how many years later, in 2020, uh, the past two Sundays, we had over 4,000 in attendance. Yeah, yeah. You got, you got the likes of Darlene Check coming this yeah. weekend to, yeah. to speak into uh, three different locations, three yeah. or four different locations. And, yeah. like, I mean, the, the things that God has established and thing, the things that God has done. That's amazing. It's incredible. As in, I, I shake my head. Yeah. As in, as in, no one's more surprised than myself. Mm. I promise you. People talk to me all the time. They say, oh, you know, and it's like they're talking about all the great things that are happening in our world. And when I think about it, I'm overwhelmed and overjoyed. As in, um, one of the things that is said about me often is I remember you even before you are the pastor at Enjoy and you're still the same. Now, I take that as a great compliment yeah. because what they're saying is I haven't got a fat head yeah. and I still talk to people yeah. and I still love people, which has always been who I've been. Um, but you know what? I, I, I'm in awe at what God has done. Mm. I'm in awe at what God has done because it's like I'm amazed. This is not the work of man. This is the work of God. And we just want to be channels that God can work through yeah. so people's lives can be changed and who knows, maybe nations can be changed. Mm. What can we dream for? Yeah. That's Cities. amazing. Nations, states, believe it at all. Yeah, no, yeah. it's incredible. It well, thank you, Pastor Shane. You're it's welcome. It's been an absolute uh, privilege and an honour to you. do this, and uh, it's been a lot of fun. And I look forward to kind of who knows where Shane's world's going to go. But who knows? I love it. I love. Uh, I love hearing your heart. You know, every time we can do this living room style thing, uh, yeah. I love. I love hearing heart. I love hearing the gems, and, and, and I just look forward to kind of exploring where this where this might lead yeah, yeah. and uh, the different conversations we're going to have, yep. the different theological debates. It's going to be good. This probably won't happen. Can I give you some advice, just a little yep. bit of advice on the way out? Because you know I care for you greatly. Yeah. When it comes to your beard, yeah. as in I would just maybe trim a little bit side along the just the face, just trim just it a little bit <laughs> and then get a pointier and squarer at the bottom. Oh, more pointy. Yeah. Oh, square up. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's too low. Square Yeah, yeah. As in, I think, as in, it's looking rich and it's looking full, (laughs) which is great. But if you trim it, it'll actually thicken up even more and it'll get definition around the edges. Yeah. That's that's um that's beautiful because that's literally what my wife said just like two nights ago. Is that right? She says it's time. I think it's time to go a bit shorter on the bottom. The spirit is moving. It's powerful. Well, on that note, thank you so much, Pastor Shane. You're welcome. And we uh, look forward to the next podcast. I'll see you soon.